Hey there and welcome to DIY Projects with Pete. Today we're going to walk through the process of organizing a shed. We'll build a loft in the back, some simple shelving on the side, a little workbench area, racks for your tools and ladders, and we'll even put in some rafters for some overhead storage. It feels really good now that the shed is organized. Every tool has a spot, there's plenty of space to walk around. The ATV, the mower, they're out of the sun and protected. And lastly, I have plenty of space to do maintenance on anything that needs to be worked on. Today's video is sponsored by Cub Cadet. I'm sitting on the Ultima Series ZT1 mower with a 54 inch wide deck. This is what I use to mow my yard and it works great. It cuts really well and because it's a zero turn mower, it's super efficient. And I think that the tubular design looks super cool. So if you're looking for a mower, definitely check this one out. I hope this video helps with getting your shed organized and inspiring you to get out and work on it. If you find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And let's go ahead and get started. I started taking things out of the shed and mowed an area of grass to have a place to set everything. When I put in the shed last year, I simply started using it without taking the time to build shelves, so trying to keep things organized wasn't easy, and obviously it didn't work out well. Here's just about everything that was laying around in the shed and cluttering it up. Next I started thinking about how I'd lay out the loft and shelving. This shed is 24 feet long by 12 feet in width but the techniques and ideas used for this shed can easily be applied to other size sheds. I measured the mower and some other items that might go under the loft, and I found that I'd need about four feet of clearance for them to fit under it. I picked up a bunch of two x four boards and a couple two x sixes to start building the loft and shelving. Now this shed project didn't cost much since the boards were cheap and because I tried to use some of the extra scrap wood around the house. The loft is going to be 4 feet deep and 12 feet wide, so I took a couple measurements and then made a few cuts on the miter saw to create a couple jack studs which will essentially help support the front of the loft. I attached the jack studs to the existing shed studs with screws and made sure they were spaced so I could use a full 4x8 sheet on top for the loft floor. One of the studs is made to hold up a 2x4 and the other is a little shorter to be able to use a 2x6 along the front. Now this is going to be plenty strong to hold what I plan to store, but feel free to modify if you feel it's necessary. I put the 2x4 up and used 2.5 inch screws on each end, and before installing these boards I'd recommend determining the crown of the wood so the arch or the crown is upward and the board won't sag. I attached the 2x6 on each end and then used 2.5 inch screws to attach it to the horizontal 2x4 board, which basically doubles up the boards to create a strong header which will support the loft. I did the measurements so the floor of the loft is 5 feet above the ground floor and then there's going to be about 4.5 feet under the header as clearance for anything needed to be stored underneath it. I added a 2x4 board at each back corner of the shed to give the sides of the loft a little extra support and also to be able to tie the back support board to it at each corner in the next step. Attach the side supports to the stud wall and double check to make sure everything's level. Next, I measured for the rear support board and first installed a scrap board in the center for additional support and to help hold the rear board up to make installing it much easier. I measured and then installed a board at the 8 foot mark which is where the end of the full sheet of plywood will rest on. I then decided doing boards 24 inches on center for supports which would be sufficient for my shelf and so I took the measurement on both the rear board and front board to ensure things were spaced properly. I used a couple screws at an angle on each end to connect them to the front and rear supports. This frame is going to be plenty of support for the loft storage area and it's now ready for either plywood or OSB. I put in new windows, sheeted, and I'm prepping to put cedar siding on my home and I had some leftover OSB board that would work well for the loft and for one of the shelves in the shed so I loaded a couple sheets and took them back to use. The OSB sheeting that went on is about $12 per 4x8 sheet, which is going to be a lot cheaper than plywood. I slid the full sheet on and then used one and a quarter inch screws to fasten it down. I used half inch thick OSB since that's what I had laying around, but the three quarter inch is only a few bucks more if you'd rather use that. I then measured it for the second sheet and cut it down to size with a circular saw. The second piece slid right in and before I knew it, the loft was in place and ready to use. The four foot deep loft is a good size in my opinion because you can still reach everything without necessarily having to climb into the loft and the four by eight sheet size is efficient for covering the platform. Next up was to build some shelves and so I started measuring for placement. 
The shelves are going to tie into the loft and be at the same height, and I cut the boards 26 and a half inches long and put a 45 degree angle on them. The actual shelves will be 24 inches deep, but the supports are needing to be a little longer since they'll reach further back into the wall and tie into the sides of the studs. The first board attached directly to the front of the loft, and then I screwed a straight board to the floor to create a jig so I could easily make the brackets for the rest of the shelf at perfect 90 degree angles. I attached each bracket at the line I'd drawn to get the correct height, and then slightly adjusted the lower bracket to ensure the supports were level. A level will work as long as your shed was installed fairly well, but if it isn't very level, you can measure up from the floor to help check that things are looking good. The supports go up quickly and secure to the studs using a couple two and a half inch long screws in both the upper and lower piece. Next, I cut a sheet of plywood in half to use as the shelf. It's the full eight feet long and will overhang the front of the supports about an inch, then attach the plywood using some shorter screws. Once the shelf was complete, I did a quick customization to be able to get up in the loft if a ladder isn't nearby. I simply attached a couple boards to the studs to create a built-in ladder tall enough to be able to climb into the loft. Next, I brought in the mower to check how well it would fit under the loft, and it worked perfect. As you can see, the Cub Cadet Ultima Series Zero Turn Mower is really maneuverable in tight spaces, which makes it great for getting close to the trees and along the sides of the deck or shed in your yard. The mower and cycle will be under it in the winter months, and then in the summer, the snowmobile will go under it, so I have easy access to use the mower and motorcycle during the warmer months. A couple subscribers mentioned to me how much additional room rafters would add to the shed, so I figured out a good height to install them at. If I ever want to park a side-by-side -side vehicle in the shed, I'd need about 76 inches of clearance, so I decided to put the rafters at a height so I'd have about 80 inches of clearance just to have a little extra room. 80 inches is low enough that I can still reach into the rafters fairly easily as well. I cut out an original support board with the Sawzall since I wouldn't need it any longer with all the new rafters. I measured 80 inches up from the floor and put a mark so I could then attach the bottom of the rafter at that mark. I bought 12 foot long 2x4s for this and cut them down to about 10 and a half feet so they'd fit correctly. I then notched the top corners of each to give them a better fit. You'll want to think about the rafter placement a little before they go up to make sure you'll have the space needed to get longer items into the rafters. I did the rafters every 32 inches for the portion of the shed where they were installed and then crown the boards so they're arching up and then use screws at each end to secure them in place. I installed a total of five rafters and they went up really quick. Double check that they're level and then it's time to start putting them to good use. I had a bunch of steel pipe and flat bar that used to be taking up space on the floor and I was able to easily fit all of it up in the rafters. I started moving some of the yard tools and items back in so I could create places for them on the walls. The ice rink snow shovels came with their own mounting brackets, so I decided to use them and attach with a couple screws. The cavities between each stud are great for storing all sorts of things, so a 2x4 went up on the front and held in some shorter pieces of tubing and scrap steel. Next up was to create a work area that I could use to sharpen a chainsaw, put a new line on a weed whacker, or just work on some smaller projects. I used a few 2x4s to frame out a floating style workbench. It's not ever going to have too much weight on it, so it's going to be plenty strong, and I'll have room underneath it for gas cans and five gallon buckets. A couple shorter pieces connecting to the studs provide additional support. I didn't want the work area to take up too much room, so I used a scrap piece of three quarter inch thick plywood that was 16 inches deep and eight feet long. This was left over from a bedroom closet project I did last year. Slide it into place and then attach from the top using a few screws. I made the rest of the racks to hold yard tools and ladders out of scrap 2x4 boards. You can bring each tool in to figure out the best layout for organizing your wall, and then simply cut the boards to the best length and attach with a few screws. Boards placed on each side of the stud creates a 1.5 inch gap, which works great for sliding in the pole handles that many yard tools have, and a single board coming out from the wall can work well for tools with handles on the ends like many shovels have. You can measure each of the tools to see how long to cut the boards, and then keep adding them as needed. Next up, I measured for a spot to put two ladders on the wall, and then hung them up. I used a few more scrap boards to create shelves within the 2x4 stud wall. This makes it so easy to add quick shelving for smaller items. I can always build more of the standard shelves at any point, but these little built-in shelves will hold everything I need to for the time being. 
The whitewater kayak slid easily into the rafters and frees up a good amount of space since it used to just sit on the floor. Then I slid in a few pieces of scrap plywood and some other boards. Under the ladders was a good spot to put the aluminum ramp, so I used a few more 2x4 boards to hold that up, and then I also have a patio umbrella that I wanted to store, so that went underneath. I had an area under the loft where I could store the ATV spraying tank, which was nice to find a spot for. I started loading up the loft and shelves, and all this extra storage is going to be great. Lastly, I brought back in the vehicles and the Cub Cadet Ultima Series mower and called it good. All right, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you found today's video helpful and that it inspires you to get out there and to organize your shed. If you have any questions for me or if you have any tips to share with other DIYers about organizing a shed, please comment below. And if you did find the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching and cheers from Montana.